hello and welcome back to Butcher That Model and part five. Five already of our build of the FX 172nd starter set, Jet Provost T4. How are you getting on with yours? Okay, okay, well done. I don't need to start. Now then, before we start on the Provost, because it's not it's only gonna be taking another couple of episodes and it's gonna be finished. Another two episodes after this. The next episode will be we'll do the painting and episode six A will be building the diorama for it to sit on. Now then let's talk about the diorama and our next kit. There are a couple of things you need to get for our next kit and to finish this one. To finish this one, if you go into, get your piece of paper, do you not want to, to buy and to find? Go and get that. We'll wait, we'll wait a second. You got it? Right. To buy, go into a DIY shop like Wilkinson's or Home Base or any of those such things and Some of that. This is a tester pot. These are great, they're about a quid. They're brilliant. It's what your mum and dad use when they're deciding they're going to decorate. And they'll buy a tester pot of the colour paints. They'll probably buy five or six. And then they'll put a little bit on the wall and stick a little, the next colour next to it to see what it looks like. Get a grey, a green. You don't have to do it for this one, but it's worth getting. If you can afford it, don't panic if you can't. You'll get it at a later date. A brown. A grey, a green and a brown. From they, I got these from Wilkinson's, they're brilliant. They're great. And they last for ages and ages and ages. Because we're only going to do little dioramas, alright? So definitely get a grey. To make it cheaper this time, we're just going to use a grey. I was going to do a bit of green and a bit of flock and that. We're going to do it as cheaply as we possibly can this very first one, alright? So just get a grey. This one is pure grey. You don't have to get the same colour, as long as it's a grey. Because what we're going to do is going to build the aeroplane on a diorama, which is the runway that it's sitting on. So we're going to use that, and we're going to use a black sharpie. Okay? Wilkinson's. Or home base, or B&Q. Just get a grey tester pot. And that's and a black sharpie. And the CD or DVD-R or some naked old DVD that doesn't work. That's all we're going to use for the diorama. Ooh, clever stuff. Right then. Our next kit. This is nice. The Provost, once we've done it, it's going to be a nice little build. And your mum and dad are going to be proud of you and say, Oh, it's done good. That's lovely. The next thing we're going to build has got a bit of a wow factor to it. Okay. I wasn't going to do this build yet, I was going to do it in a few builds time because it's a little bit advanced and your parents are going to have to help you with it at one stage if you're a young modeler. Especially when it comes to the buying. Stuff to buy for the next kit, and this is where your parents are going to have to get it for you, is this stuff. Okay, this is two part epoxy resin. It Once it's mixed and poured out it looks like glass if you use blue ink with it and you mix it together tiny tiny little few drops with it and pour it it looks like water all right you're going to need four or five of these and a pound each so it's quite an expensive one we're going to do it's going to be pushing our 20 pound budget now the kit we're going to get is an airfix starter kit again and it's around at about 10 pound on online you may have it, your local model shop may have it, you might you might not. You can definitely find it. It's an old kit, but it's a very small kit and it's a very easy kit to build. It's only got like 35 parts. But they're very, very tiny. It's one four hundred scale, a type seven U-boat, and it's the one featured in the film Das Boot. Das Boat. Alright, Das Boot. I've actually got the book. As well, 
it, it's a German film made in 1981, I believe, in German. Okay, it's about a U boat and its crew. Das boat. Now, the model we're making is actually the model of from the film. It's actually got the markings. It's got like a it's like a swordfish, an angry swordfish. The decal that sits on the side of it. We're going to build it and it's going to be cool. And we're going to build it like this. Like it's floating in the water. See? It's going to be awesome. Now the things you're going to have to need to get though. Are obviously. The resin. Your parents are going to have to buy that for you. Because it's an age restricted product. You have to be 16 or older to buy it. Okay. Some of this from the pound shop as well. This is all purpose filler. All right. It's what you use to fix holes in walls and cracks and things like that. All right, but because the when we make make up the uh, the resin, it heats up as it's curing. Okay, you need some of this as well. This is stuff to find. Just a sheet of polystyrene, not too thick. Okay, but because the resin heats up when it's curing, it will melt this plastic, the polystyrene. So we're going to use some of that, and we're going to use that as a barrier between the two. Clever stuff, see. Using this cuts down on the amount of resin we have to use. It's quite an expensive build, I'm trying to say. It's going to push our £20 budget to its max, alright? But it's going to be beautiful and you're going to be so proud of it when you finished it, when we built it. And honestly, your friends and your parents are going to go, that's brilliant, that's beautiful, alright? You need to buy a box frame. Now a box frame's a picture frame, but it's deep. It's what people would put a picture in and then put seashells in it and things like that. Okay, like a 3D thing. You don't need a very big one. It has to be 200 millimeters long, minimum. Because the submarine that we're gonna build is 166 millimeters. And you're gonna need a bit round the sides. All right, you're not gonna just sit it in and look like it's squashed in the box. Get one about 200 millimeters long, 100 millimeters wide, and about 40 millimeters deep. So write that on your bit of paper. All right. They do sell them in the pound shops. You might have to hunt about. All right. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to have to hunt about. If not, we'll hunt around online and I'll see what we can find online. But it's got to be 200 millimeters long, about 100 millimeters wide, and 40 millimeters deep. And I promise you, when we built it, you are going to be so proud of yourself, and people are going to be so impressed with it. All right. So let's get on now with oh ink. Did I mention ink? Need ink as well because we're going to have to turn the resin blue. But we're going to use you know the your fountain pen. You've got those ink cartridges, haven't you? You just need one of those. All right. You only need a couple of drops because it's you don't want to put too much in, but we'll come to that when we get to the building stage and what and the, and the makings of it. Okay, so just get yourself an ink cartridge. I think that's everything. You know what I'm like? I'm an idiot. I forget things. I think that's all we need for now. If not, I'll let you know in the next one. So anyway, the provost. Should we get on and build stuff? Right. What I've done is I've painted, like I said, all the little tiny bits on the sprue. I've taken them all off. I've put them all in my my little box of safety keepings okay these are the parts we need for the cockpit okay I painted them on the sprue I've taken them off the sprue I've touched up all the little points that we took them off and sanded I've touched it all up okay now what I've done is let's have a look at the seat I don't know if you can see that what I've done is I painted the seat covers the cushion bit because I'm not having the pilots in I painted it I lightened up, you remember what we did with the black, we lightened it because once something's black you can't put shadow on it, you can't make it darker or you put a black thing next to it, it, it just blends in so what I did was I painted it slightly lighter with adding some grey to it and then I painted the seat belts black and then the buckle in the middle, I just put a tiny drop of the silver just a tiny drop, so it actually looks like the seat buckle and then what else I did was I, all around the edge Will that focus on it? 
all around the edge I picked out all the detail with the silver just very lightly and very carefully and it just adds interest it just makes it look now like it's a three-dimensional seat instead of just a black dull blob remember I did mine as well with the sharpie on the bed on the on the D thing and then the silver the little box at the top I did that silver All right it probably isn't like that in real life it's just that we've got a limited palette and we're trying to make it look interesting All right, and that's the only way we could do it with our four colour limited palette the same with the floor remember I said about the detail on the top and that I've just picked it out in silver nothing fancy it doesn't have to be accurate and neat and just pick it out Leave you can actually leave little bits of black because then it looks like weathering and chipping and all right just to give it a bit of detail i also did the control pit panel the, the 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 grippy things that they hold on to the yokes in the instructions it says it's black at the bottom and it's gray at the top what i did then as well is i just picked out the very top in red just to add a bit of interest because at the end of the day we're not entering this in a competition it doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate if we was we'd have bought all the paints in the world and we'd have looked online at reference pictures of cockpit, you know, Provost cockpits, and we'd have picked out every single detail accurately. We're not doing that, it's just a model kit for us to build, and it's something to have in our room. Alright, so I've just picked it out in red, just to make it look a bit, you know, a bit nicer, give it a bit of interest. So, let's get on and build this. Now the first thing we need to do, when it comes to building stage, is we need to put the deco. <gasps> We're going on to decaling! We're going to have to put the decal on the instrument panel. All the dials and clocks and bells and whistles. Okay, so let us find our decal sheet. And let's get on with some serious stuff. Now, we're just going to use water. I'm not going to use micro set and micro on this. I'm going to show you how to do it just with water. Okay. You need your tweezers. You need a pair of tweezers. You need a cocktail stick and either a little piece of kitchen roll or a cotton cotton bud or a Q-tip as the Americans call them, as our American friends call them Q-tips. I don't know why they call them Q-tips. One of our American friends, if you can tell us where, where Q-tip comes from, we just call them cotton buds. Unless Q-tips are like a company, I don't know, I'm not sure. If not, I'll ask my American friend Lynn who's Lynn Dipple, who's a friend of ours on the Model Making Boom Hut, and she's part of Smoon the Crew. We, we go live on a Saturday night. And we have a bit of a laugh and a joke and a goof about, and we, we occasionally build stuff together. Now, it's worth nipping in the scene and have, have, have a look, you know. But please be aware, it's not for the younger model makers that we do swear. There is bad languaging and adult content because we are a bunch of adults so if you are over 18 and you are watching this channel please feel free to join us on a Saturday evening at 7.30 on the YouTubes and it's called Smoo and the Crew and you'll watch a bunch of very crazy silly old people having a laugh and a joke and messing about so we've cut the decal off okay now I use a plastic tray I got from work for doing my decal and you don't have to you could just do it on the tile I just like to be a little bit neater I've got one of these things I, I got this from work it's what it's just a bit of packaging that stuff was in and I thought oh I can use that and I asked my boss he said yeah it's only going in the bin Dave you can have it so let's pop one end up that's what I do I pop one end up I put some some water now the best way of doing it is to add a little bit of water. Oh, blimey, I sneezed. A little bit of water. Now, use lukewarm water, not hot water. Don't ever put these in hot water, you will destroy them. But lukewarm or just slightly over room temperature, water helps them. And all you do is you sit it in the water. It's called a water slide transfer basically or decal leave it in the water for a couple of seconds and then what I like to do 
you can take it out of the water and then just leave it it's basically a printed piece of very thin plastic that's got I don't know it's adhesive or it's or it uses some sort of like friction you know like you got your you use uh, cling film it's got like static hasn't it I don't know if it works on that or whether it's it's a gluey thing what we'll have to do is I shall go online I've never really thought about it it's one of those things you never really think about as a model but you just do it well, you, that's how you do it you stick it in water how does it work is it actually a glue on the back of this little tiny thin microscopic thin piece of plastic or I don't know so it's boring watching this bit we have to leave it for a couple of minutes for the water to soak in make sure your parts clean as well make sure you're going to put it on the right way around okay so we'll have a look at the instructions now one side's very flat the other side's got an indentation in the back where it fastens to the center console so let's have a look it goes on the very flat side not the side with the cutout in it okay so it goes on that side so let's have a see if it's ready for moving so we get the cocktail stick let's hold it right see how now it's floating all right it's moving don't ever try and force it if it doesn't move don't try and force it because you'll tear it just leave it for another minute or two and it will work its side loose now all you do get that out of the way this is where it falls over and I get wet and, right all you do is very gently slide it get rid of the number you don't want the number on there very gently slide it and place it where it needs to be now you can move it about and then you just leave it and it will it will set itself down now we're not worried about a thing called silvering because it's inside and you're not going to see much of it. Now I could now use a thing called Microset and Microsol and coat it and that actually slightly melts it into the thing that you, you don't need to do it at tiny little details like this. So we'll just leave it for a minute and leave it to dry. It's not, I know it's very small you can't really see it. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put it up to the camera in a minute. This is where it's probably going to go pinging across the room. Oh, see, I've moved it now. So let's move it. You do get, it does take a quite a bit of time before it actually goes off. Right, so what we'll do, we'll leave that to one side for a bit and we'll get on to gluing the cockpit together. So. Gluing of the cockpit bit, and that's what we want. So look at our instruction now. Number one, and we need to fasten part 15, which is the console, the centre console, and part one and three, which are the control yokes. All right, so I'm going to use this stuff. Remember, I said a little tiny bit on your dad's old tile. Oh, that's a big bit. That's a big bit. Now, if I was just using it out of the thing, I'd try and squeeze it on there, and I would end up with a huge amount of blob of glue on the bottom of that, and it would look absolutely pants. Which is why I said it's Satan's snot, and it's a pig to use unless you know how to do it. Where's my kniffy? My kniffy of much sharpness. Here we go. So, cocktail stick. Ping. Throw that bit in the bin. Oh, where's my dirty, filthy habit? From? My ashtray. Oh, yeah. Right. So we've got our flattened bit of cocktail stick for applying Satan's snot. So the centre console has. Two locating lugs and there's two holes in the middle all right so what you can do is just get 
tiny tiny bit remember what i said about don't use too much glue you'd be surprised at how little glue you actually need to fasten things together it's amazing and then just pop him in the hole and he's done now I added a bit more detail on this one I just picked there's a little tiny if you look on the side of it there's a little tiny circle I've just done it I just did the little tiny silver marks I just picked it out with the edge of the brush painted that little bit red and it just adds some detail to it instead of it just being a black blob it's artistic license you can do whatever you want with it it's your model kit use artistic license we stuck that down now the next thing we've got to do is the little control sticks now a lot of people use tweezers and they'll pick up little tiny bits with tweezers okay be very careful when you're doing that because things ping out of tweezers and there is a creature i don't know if you're aware of this creature it's called the carpet monster i guarantee the first bit of plastic model kit tiny little bit like that you use tweezers for it and it pings across the room and, you, and it lands on your carpet. I guarantee within the time it takes you to get off the chair and turn around to find it, the carpet monster will have eaten it. Guarantee it. The carpet monster survives by eating little bits of plastic that you drop. You don't believe me, do you? Wait till you do it. Wait till you do it. You will not find the first tiny piece of model kit that you drop on your carpet mine's even worse i've got bare wooden flooring and that's even worse than carpet because it bounces and i've lost a part for model kit and found it days later with a, it's obviously been regurgitated by the by the carpet monster and it's been the, literally the other side of the room right so very carefully if you're using tweezers don't let it ping okay. pop it in the hole and straighten it up and the same with that one we'll pop it in the hole Glue on it, it goes that way around and just fits in that hole there eventually. My very old knackered eyes, you'll have a lot easier job with this because your eyesight is probably 20 20. Mine is extremely old and knackered, it's all that staring at dinosaurs when I was younger. Mind you, I don't know how to run fast. You think he saw us? It's the worst dinosaur we ever had. Did you think he saw us? Well, yeah, we could run fast then, days. Right then. So that's part one. Finish Ed. We've actually finished stage one of the build. We've actually managed to build something. Right then. So stage two is to put the firewall on the front now there's two locating tabs underneath and there's two tabs there so all you need to do is do it underneath okay put it on the locating tabs always try and glue things so that if you can do it from an underneath do it that way then you won't be able to see if you do make a mess with the gluing you won't see it and there we go it's that simple so the next part are putting in the seats and da -da -da. they're universal they're both it doesn't matter which way you put them in they, both, they look the same on either side so there is no 
left or right and just basically just two identical seats so a little tiny bit of glue there and a little tiny bit there because it leans against just two raised areas and the back of the seat leans against that so a little bit on the bottom and a little tiny bit on that and it will secure it at two points then and it will be a wonderful wonderful bond One's in. Considering that we've only got a limited palette, this is actually starting to look quite nice inside it. When it's built, it's going to look, oh, that's cool in there. Just by doing that, add a little bit of grey and then pick out some detail on the edge with the silver. And that's, I'm quite proud of that, I quite like that, that looks cool. So, let's leave that to dry for a minute. Now our decal should be conformed and dry now. And there you go. How nice it looks when you put a decal on it. It looks like a proper dashboard, an instrument panel. And that's the next thing we need to fasten on. And that goes on the centre console that we built. There's a square lug and at the back of it is a square thing. So we'll put a little tiny bit of glue on there. Oh, that was the wrong edge. What a plonker. Duh. I'm such a duh sometimes. My children will tell you I am a duh. Let's do that. It's very boring watching me do this, but we have to build it. And I've just lifted that up a little bit, that decal on that corner. It caught on that. So, flatten it back out again. And there we have it. A cop built. Maybe built. And ready to go in the bodywork. So, let's have a look at the next bit. Now, the next bit is putting in. It's called. That's now called the sub assembly. That's a copy sub assembly. So you built your first sub assembly. So the next stage is to fit the sub assembly to the actual body of the airing plane. Oh, let's get the button. That's the wrong one. It's in this one. It's in this tub of much tubbiness. Oh, don't be like Dave. Dave's an idiot. Don't leave your decals lying about because he's told you as soon as these get damp, it's game over. As soon as you get well, put them back in your box. Don't be like Dave. Dave's a what? Dave's an idiot. Right, so we'll get the two hours of a cockpit route. Ready? Now it said if you're going to use this on a sitting on its wheels you need to put two and a half grams 2.5 grams of weight in the front now 2.5 grams of weight is a tiny amount it's not a lot and we're going to, i'm just going to use blue tack okay now the other thing as well is because we're going to put this on a diorama we're going to actually fasten it to something i could not bother putting the weight in because i could just put a tiny bit of super glue on the front wheel and when it sits on the diorama it'll glue it down anyway so think ahead of your, of your plan you know if i was just going to put it on a shelf without sitting on the base then yeah i'd put the two and a half grams in i'm going to do it anyway because that's what you know the instructions tell us to do but if i was doing this my you know myself and my, my own builds i wouldn't bother i'd just put a tiny drop of super glue on the bottom of the front wheel when I was building the diorama and I glue it to the base that way it's obviously falling off as well so it says we have to put the entire sub assembly into there now where's my pointing stick right, the pointing stick there's a 
box section which actually gives you a little bit of plastic for it to sit on so it lines up properly okay what I did as well I painted them silver and picked out all the little detail I, I, there's no detail on it. I just did little red dots and little black dots just to add something to look at because it's artistic license and it's our kit and we can do what we want with it and I just thought being matte black in there it just be boring so I did that no you don't have to you can do it if you want to you don't have to you can just leave it the matte black so let's put our glue of much satan snottiness in there and if you notice on there there's another cutaway section that this bit the front firewall fits into so I'll put some glue into that okay and then just him in there now you see how that looks now with that fight with the sidewall well I've just picked out little bits and made it up as I went along just adds more to your kit just adding a little tiny bit of detail here and there artistic license I love artistic license because I'm not a river counter I don't care about river counters. They don't scare me. I'm an ex-soldier. I've had angry people throwing bombs and petrol bombs and bricks and all sorts at me. And I've been shot at. So river counters don't scare me in the slightest. Don't ever, ever be worried about river counters and trolls and bullies. Because all they want you to do is get upset. Ain't worth it. Right then, so we've done that. We've got that bit in there. Now, to add the weight, I'm just going to use glue. Oh, ooh, uh, my seat fell off. See what happens when you drop things. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, missus, I've lost my seat. I think the pilot ejected out of it when it was crashing. The other fella didn't, bless him. Right, so let's pop that back in there. Let's pop him back in there straight. There we go, that's better. See, no harm done. Right, so to use that bit of weight, I'm going to use some blue tack. All you need to do is leave little balls of it. it. Doesn't have to be right at the front, it could be behind as well. Right. I'll just put it in there so it's. You don't want. You don't want to be especially careful because here at the very front is where the front wheel is going to go. So you don't want to block that up with blue tack. So I'll stick some behind the cockpit as well. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Just don't don't block off the holes that you're going to be putting glue into. Okay, and it will actually help the cockpit stay in the right position now make sure you don't get it where you don't want it and you don't want it where the two halves of the fuse large are going to meet like that all right so just make sure you keep that area clear because you're going to stick the next part to that okay and that's all you need to do just a little bother blow the blue tack in it let's get some glue down on it that's Put a bit more Satan snot on there, some more poly cement. A solvent based cement suitable for plastic model kits only. Oh, flipping heck. Oh, flipping heck. See, even I make mistakes. So don't you worry about making mistakes. I've now had both pilots eject out of the plane. Both invisible ghost pilots have ejected out of the plane. Well, back in there. Mm-hmm. Alright then. Uh -huh. 
Aha, there you go. Oh, oh, oh Richie. I just did a scene from Bottom, one of my favourite comedy shows then. Well before your time. But very, very funny. We get to see a programme called Bottom for the older people that are watching, not for the younger ones. Bottom was a funny, funny TV programme. Used to make me giggle. Still makes me giggle. So let's just run some glue along the edges. Now I'm going to put this together using this, but I'm also, for those of you that have been fortunate enough to buy to me an extra thin, I'm going to show you now how you can use that as well. So I'm not really cheating, I am using. Now then. I'm not going to actually use it because that would be cheating. I'm going to show you how to use it. Though. To me, extra sin. The way to use to me extra sin is you put the two halves together dry. Okay. You get your applicator brush and you just dab it and then squeeze it and, and it will the glue will run all the way around that bit. Capillary reaction will, and it will melt itself together. So. We fasten the two halves together using a sight and snot. Now you could then use pegs. You could use clamps if you've got them. Okay. But I'm going to do it as if I am the poorest and poorest of us. And I'm just going to wrap elastic bands around it. Literally just pull, twist, round, pull twist round okay and just fasten an elastic band around it and try and get it as tight as you can okay you don't want this one is designed to have a ridge so we're not too bothered about the seam line on the provost because it's supposed to have a bit of a line there now We'll get rid of it later, just a tiny bit by the by the cab, by the canopy, by sanding. Right, so we've got elastic band that bit. Let's get it up there. And then we need to take elastic band the front. And yet again, I'll just move my seat again because my big, fat, clumsy fingers. See, the problem with Satan's knot is it takes so long to dry as well. But that's what I'm using because one or two of us, that's all we're going to have to use. Oh, was that? It was a seat. Oh, right, so we're going to go. Now, the carpet monster. Took me to bats because the seat's quite a big bit. There we go, we found it. Oh, oh. Grab that before the carpet monster gets it. There's only a tiny bit of glue left on there, so I'll just seat it in like that. I'm such a klutz, really am. I am clumsy. There we go. Right, so now we need to leave that to dry for a bit. Definitely need to get that tighter. Oh, it's right again, I've pinged it again. Try and get that done. There we go. It will it will stick eventually, the glue will will work, there will be workings and glueage and stickiness there we go right now we need to leave that to dry
So, what else can we do? We can stick the back bit and we can stick the engine on. Well, that's trying because we can work on this end. Okay, so it comes actually quite nicely. That's a bit of glue all the spill there. Now, let's just get that off while it's still not fully cured. can do we've done part nine onto part ten which is to fit all the rear bits together so where's my box of boxiness a box of boxing stuff right stuff in the box so we need we need engine bit that we painted on the spur so it was silver at the bottom and red at the top and we need this now what I suggest is you don't fit this yet you fit this after we've painted and the reason being that bit silver now when we come to paint it we could paint over that okay if we do it later and stick it on the back later we will get a beautiful straight line right so leave this bit off you could put this on right at the very end so we'll leave that off and we'll have a beautiful definition between The red of the body and the silver from the jet exhaust. Right, so this one needs a little bit of snot and just put it on the cross piece. A bit more now. Do, do, do. It's long, isn't it? Sorry, it's long and boring, but it's the, it's the good bit when you actually come and do it. We're building it together, okay? So just glue on the thing, and then literally it's here's that way, yeah. Is it that way, or that way, that way. Just slide straight in, and it's so. This is a new tool, Airfix kit, where they've been brand new molds. It fits beautifully. We don't have to worry about filler and putty and filling in gaps because there isn't one. That's actually very nicely engineered by Airfix. If this was the original Matchbox Jet Provost, we would be using glues and putties and everything we possibly could. That's better. That's clipped in now. Elastic man pinned off. Right then. So we'll leave the engine bit off for now. We want to put the rudder on the back. The rudder of multi rudder in this. There. Get the wings out because they're going on in a minute as well. So let's dry fit it first to make sure it's All right. So we can just glue straight to those points there and there. So your cocktail stick, run it down it. Tiny bit on the top to give it two anchor points. This one you could actually give it three points, and literally it just slides straight on like that. And yet again, that is a very nicely engineered 
So well done there, Fix. Model manufacturers are now extremely worried because the competition is getting extremely strong. There's Bandai from Japan are the leaders in kit manufacture. Although the plastic's very strange, they don't bake it after they make it. What happens with this is it gets injection molded and then it gets baked and it makes the plastic quite hard. Bandai don't do that. So you've got to be very, very careful. When we come to do a Gundam later on, you need to be very careful with the stuff that we use. Otherwise we will actually destroy the plastic and eat it. And we don't want that. Right, so the next bit, now we've got the back done, is to get the wings on. So, we take them off, we've cleaned them up. I painted the inside where the wheels go black. Right, that should be nice enough now. So I'm not going to risk damaging anything. It's only lasted man. I'm just going to put it off and throw them in the bin. And the same with this one. I don't want to risk damaging what we've done, so we'll just. Use our skizzers and just break it off. Right then, so the wings. Dry fit it first to see where the uh, where the gluing points are and if it actually fits all right. And put the back in first and then lay the front. And that another absolutely beautiful fit. This is a beautifully engineered kit. There's no gluing, no filling, and there's no gaps between that and that. So, yeah, again, well done, FX. This Provost is actually a very, very nice kit to build. It's a very easy kit to build. There's no hassle, there's no big gaps to panic about. The only thing wrong with it. And it's not wrong with it, it's the way it is, it's the nature of the beast because it's a starter set and you get the paints. The, my only complaint with it is the limited palette of paint. It would have been nice if we'd have had a white with it because then we could have used the white with the, the black and the, we could have painted the pilot's helmets white. We could have picked out more detail in the cockpit if we had some white, but we haven't got that. But that's my only criticism of this kit. Is the lack of colours on the palette. But then the kit was very cheap, it was a £10 kit. And you do actually get a lot for your money. The only thing I wish Airfix would do, and I'm sorry, Umbro, but I do wish they'd use different glue. So that's the wing done. We just got to put these two bits on. So that one. So we'll dry fit it first. Have a look. And that looks pretty blooming good to me. So we'll put the gluings on it. Satan's, Satan's snort. Put some of that down on the thing. And then using my cocktail stick on the, you've got little raised points that have the hole on the other bit. Right, so just rub some down it. And some glue down there. There's a peg there, a big long peg on the things at the end of the wings. Oh, oh, don't be silly. So now we can either use clamps or pegs. 
or elastic bands just to clamp them bits together just while the glue sets I'm just going to put a couple of clamps on it ooh, ooh uh, my clamp fell apart I broke my clamp the clip we just clip back on Click that on there. Same on the other side. We'll get the cocktail stick. Wrap it in with glue. Put it on the anchor points. A little bit on there. We'll run it down the edge. Just roll it down. Don't go too mad. Just little bits of glue. Like that on there. Bop them into place. Some clamps or some elastic bands. And now it really is starting to look like an aeroplane. Albeit an aeroplane with big clumpy clumpy bits hanging off it. So. Now it looks like an aeroplane. And we've been waffling on for plenty long enough. And you're probably bored by now. What we'll do is. The best thing to do now is. Leave it all to dry. Pop the canopy on. I'll show you how to do that in the next episode. After we've painted it. Okay. Don't put anything else on it. All the little tiny bits like the wheels and the aerials okay leave them off for now because when you come to paint it and you come to work on it you will just snap them off and break it all right so leave it off for now and we'll carry on in episode six where we actually get to do some paintings i've been dying name's dave this has been butcher that model and we'll see you in the next episode bye